Um, I know I'm between you and dinner, so I'm going to keep it brief. Uh, but this is a little bit of my story. It's going to be, this is an LA story. It's as much of an LA story, and also it's going to be a story about collaboration and acceptance. That's the way I see it. So yes, I, I, um, I actually spent a lot of my younger, younger days outside of Hong Kong in the Bay Area. So for the longest time, there's always a rivalry between San Francisco and Los Angeles. Right, San Francisco, they got the greenery, they got the forest, they got the ocean, they got the bay, they got the beauty. So going to graduate school up north, in one of the schools up north, I always thought, okay, I never want to be in L.A. because all my friends at USC and L.A., I go to party with them at SC, but, but L.A. is full of strip malls, strip malls after strip malls after strip malls when you go in La Brea. So I always thought, okay, San Francisco is where I want to invest in, not L.A. As fate would have it, um, I actually came to L.A., chance upon this project, which was bankrupt at that time, called the Hollywood Roosevelt Hotel. And uh, Chapter 11, bankruptcy, Hollywood, you didn't want to go there. This is 1995 vintage. So I was very fortunate to be able to convince a very established banker at that time, at that time already Dominic, who actually was willing to bank me. I don't know what he saw, but thank you, Dominic. <laughs> um, and um, that's one thing great about LA. It's very accepting. It's very accepting, right? This is a giant melting pot. It doesn't matter whether you're from China or Hong Kong or Asia or anywhere in the world. If you come here and do something that the community here accepts, they will embrace you, which is what happened with the Roosevelt Hotel. It was a uh, down on its knee historical asset with a lot of soul. But um, Hollywood at the time is homeless, it's drugs, it's prostitution, you name it, it's there. So it's not, it's, not, it's, not, it's not anything tied to Hollywood other than by name only. And at that time, I also befriended a um, local politician, Eric Gassetti who was a district councilman of Hollywood at that time. So we became friends. And uh, so we still talk about it today how, because I was naive, so I think our, our guts at that time helped turn around Hollywood, and that in turn helped um, turn Hollywood into what it is today. And I really have to thank two very important women in my life, my mother and my, my wife. Right? My mother was always very supportive. I didn't have the best grades in school, but I get by. She always say, okay, just pursue your passion. And my wife, for whatever reason, believed in me, right? So she gave me a lot of confidence. So those two I have to thank. Um, and obviously I have to thank Los Angeles for being such open to an outsider. And I think that's something we all can learn as US and China go through this trade war, right? Right now, we're very close uh, with a lot of the Chinese government be, being, doing a lot of business in China on the ground. And the chasm on the two sides actually can be bridged but I think it's people in this room who can really help reach that chasm. Because LA is the melting pot, right? It should be an example. And right after Hollywood, I looked around and I said, downtown Los Angeles is ridiculous. I, I talked to a lot of my friends who live on the west side. They say, anywhere past La Brea, it might as well be a separate country. Not even a separate zip code, it's a separate country, right, from, from the west side crowd. And I said, okay, it's interesting. I grew up in Hong Kong, spent a lot of time in old European cities. We like people. Downtown LA has all the infrastructure. Yes, you have a subway system no, no one in LA use. Granted, I think that's changing with the millennials. Um, but all the highways feed into downtown LA. If there's one downtown in LA, one urban core in LA, it would be downtown LA. And you have the, the most incredible historical buildings with a lot of history and a lot of soul. The Bradbury Building, Douglas Building, One Bunker Hill, all these buildings. The beauty is a lot of them were vacated because the whole new CBD in downtown got moved to Bunker Hill. So all these historical buildings were vacated, allowing creatives, like Jeffrey in the room, the arts community to actually re-embrace them. So we started moving to downtown LA because it was an obvious choice. And um, some of these historical buildings, they speak to you. So people say, how, how do you pick these buildings and how do you uh, make them sexy? I said, actually, none of them were sexy before. But I think these buildings speak to you because they have a soul, they have a personality. So that's important. Um, so that's, that's why we're passionate about what we do. And what I've learned in US allow me to actually take what I've learned and apply it in these successful projects in the US and take it to the rest of the world, whether it's Berlin, whether it's Shanghai, whether it's Beijing. And I've learned every time we have a successful project, hopefully successful for the investors, it's all about building communities. How do we actually create communities from new buildings or actually revitalize communities with old buildings? Ideally, if you walk by an empty building every day, you didn't see it. And one day when it's revitalized, you walk by and say, this, I didn't realize this exists in my neighborhood. 
But then, and, and my, my very close YPO friend just reminded me, and he is right. So a recent project we're tackling is 27 public housing society shopping centers in Hong Kong. So this serves 1.1 million people. And I told my friends, I said, you, I guarantee you cannot tell me we're doing something sexy because these are not sexy. But this serves the local community. These are public housing, middle to lower middle class. So I think my wife's value uh, uh, had a very positive influence on me on how do we put our creative hat on and how do we actually turn these shopping centers that belong to these communities back to what they need in these communities, understanding their needs. Right? Sometimes when we revitalize a community, we often kicked out the chefs looking for a cheaper rent to revitalize the community or the artists who get kicked out. So now our philosophy is how do we go look at the whole community and then how do we actually go support the artists, support the restaurateurs in these neighborhoods that make these neighborhoods special? And then how do we maybe subsidize the rent but then some of our newer projects were actually, we bring in the chains to pay the full market rent to help us subsidize some of these small operators who make these neighborhoods unique and make these communities special. Right, so, so hopefully this formula will work, but this, that's my passion right now on this project in Hong Kong we're doing. And ultimately, it's really about listening and caring in these communities to care for them, to allow you to figure out what product these communities need. So in a way, this takes me full circle back to a Chinatown project which you saw, which we're able to attract um, David Chang of Major Domo, uh, Mo, uh, Momofuku from New York to open Major Domo, which is an interesting project. And in fact, two days ago, I was talking to a friend, an LA guy. He said, isn't that super risky to actually turn these empty warehouses in uh, downtown Los Angeles into this destination with Major Domo, uh, protect the bar and all that? I said, from your point of view, it's risky, but I think it's totally riskless because this is Los Angeles. Los Angeles is an insider town. Everyone in Los Angeles wants to be an insider. And these days, we're all striving to create experience. I said, what better experience do you have to have friends, whether they live in Beverly Hills or Malibu or Santa Monica, drive the out-of-town friends through the highway system of LA, go off the freeway, go to Chinatown, blacked out warehouse district, and then 10 seconds later, the restaurants, major demo light up in front of you, right? That experience of taking someone from the west side, maybe driving to a separate country, as they say, into downtown LA, and then seeing a the restaurant, right? I think that's an experience that LA insider would relish. So I felt that's not uh, a whole lot of risk. So really, thank you, LA. Thank you for allowing me to learn my ropes here, to allow me to do what I do and embrace what we have created uh, for this community. And it's really about collaboration. So hopefully, we all can help China and U.S. get past this adolescent quarrel. Thank you.